2024 Perry Roubaix on site here in Copiana, northern France. And two things are on everyone's mind. Can anyone stop the express bullet train of Matthew Vanderpool riding towards victory? And especially given that crash recently in the Tour of the Basque Country, the safety of cycling. We saw that crash just the other day and it involved three of the four big stars heading in for the 2024 Tour de France. Remco Evenepoel, Jonas Vingago, and Primoz Rolic all down stage four Tour of the Basque Country on Thursday. And things, well, it didn't look good for those riders. And safety here in what's called the hell of a north, a race that's always dangerous to race. We're facing 260 kilometers of racing on Sunday, tomorrow, in around about 12 hours time. In those 260 kilometers of racing, 55 kilometers of cobbles, broken up over various sectors, and some of the serious ones, Mons en Pavel, Carrefour de l'Arbe, and the first of the big ones, the Arnberg Forest. Well, it's that Arnberg Forest that's on everyone's mind, and in past years, it's caused some serious damage, partly because it is one of the first big cobblestone sectors, and so there are a lot of riders heading into that sector, and they're heading into it at fast, high speeds, coming at around 100 kilometers to go. And you think back to 1998, that's when Johan Museo, the line of Flanders, crashed, fractured his kneecap. Then we've had crashes in recent years as well on that sector. Well, what the organizers have done, I think it was just Wednesday they announced it, a few days out before the race, throwing everybody a curveball and literally putting curves in the course before the Armbrick Forest was announcing this chicane, the series of turns heading into the Armbrick Forest. The idea is to slow down the riders, get some slower speeds before heading in to that rough and tough Armbrick Forest. There's a, there's a lot of talk of, about safety at the moment. And, you know, personally, I, well, I wasn't in Basque. I, don't, I can't really comment on that particular crash, but I think it's... Um, it, 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 you know, it detracts from what we, from all the good things. The constant talk about safety and how we can improve and be safe. And I think, you know, of course we're getting faster. The race is getting faster, and this is, and all the riders' level across the board is is higher than it used to be, and that's why there's more crashes. Um, but yeah, I, I don't like the fact that it's, it's always the, the centre of attention. You know, after two years of COVID, you got sick of talking about COVID, and it's getting the same thing now. But riders, riders' safety is is at stake. So that is, um, yeah, it's not something that we, we we can't talk about. I'm not happy. I think it's really good they search for a for a safer way to go into Arenberg because it's really dangerous. But yeah, it's uh, not the way to go in my opinion. And I did the recon of it uh, yesterday, and um, yeah, it's uh, really not good uh, in my opinion. But um, we will see tomorrow. I think. The idea of going in, a, of slowing down the approach, I think it's a really good idea. Whether the chicane is a good idea as the way to slow the race down, I'm not so sure. I think it's it's definitely a step in the right direction to slow down the approach to Arenberg, but yeah, I'm kind of intrigued to see how it plays out in the race. But yeah, I think having crashed at 60k an hour on cobbles, I'm happy that Fingers crossed that won't be happening tomorrow. The fact that we've managed to have a change come about by the CPA before Roubaix in the way that it has done, I think it's, it's a positive thing. We've got to keep pushing to make races more safe because the speeds, the equipment is only making us go faster. That makes it harder, you know, we will see a slower handbag tomorrow than usual and, and it makes it harder to get the bike up to speed. But, uh, if it affects the race or not, I, I can't tell you. We never had anything similar in this uh, in this part of the race, so we will see after tomorrow. Yeah, the sport's getting faster. You know, everyone's trying to go for the aero advantages and whatnot. And of course, the level's so high, so people are trying to take the risk. I don't know if I have the correct answer for any of it, but uh, yeah, with the chicane, I mean, it'll just make uh, the acceleration out of that corner and the Arnberg Forest even harder. So uh, sometimes a harder race is uh, safer because everyone uh, is all in one line. I mean, riding up a mountain is pretty dang hard and uh, the crashes don't usually happen going up a mountain. The jury's out on whether or not it'll make a difference. Speaking with some of the riders here in the mix zone ahead of the Perry roubaix bike race, and we had the presentation today, saw so all the riders 
come through, including Tom Pitcock, who's a surprise late entry to the race, world champion, winner of Flanders, Matthew Vanderpool, and also winner of last year's Paris-Roubaix. We were speaking with the riders, and the jury's out on whether or not it's a good thing, but they're applauding the organizer for making a change and trying something new. We could see crashes in those curves before the actual Arenberg itself, and we'll for sure see slower speeds heading on to the Arenberg. Now, I talked about the surprise entry of Tom Pitcock. He crashed out in the recon of the stage one time trial of the Tour of the Basque Country. The crash wasn't as bad as they initially thought, and he was able to recoup, recover, and be here on the start line in his first professional Perry roubaix And that means he's backing up his last participation. Well, I think it was his last, but he's won the junior Perry roubaix and now he's back to try to do so in the professional version. And he faces hot favorite, Matthew Vanderpool, world champion now, winner of the world championships in Glasgow. He won last year after dealing with Walt Van Aert, had a puncture, after dealing with John Degenkolb, had a crash, and with his own teammate there behind, Jasper Philipsen, taking second in the sprint ahead of a dejected Walt Van Aert. Now, I told you we'd talk about the safety of the riders because we've had a series of crashes in recent weeks, notably Walt Van Aert and Doris Dwarf Landeren, there that also involved several other top riders, but a series of crashes that involved top cycling stars, Walt Van Aert in that race, and then recently, of course, in the Tour of the Basque Country, three of the four top Grand Tour stars heading in to race the Tour de France. And that was a crazy day for cycling. We see these crashes all the time, unfortunately, in cycling, but that day it involved big names, all three of those riders out. Primoz Rolich, well, He's the most fortunate out of those three. We know about Jonas Vingago, fractured ribs, fractured collarbone, and punctured lung. We spoke with the team general manager here in the mix zone, Richard Plug, who said he didn't want to speculate on whether or not Jonas could make it back in time for the Tour de France in three months. Right now, he's focusing on the rider's safety, the rider's well-being, and recovering. And then we'll talk about what's possible. But I said, Richard, given such a big team with so much investment, you got to have your B and your C plan. So maybe they do have that in place, but they're going to see how Jonas recovers first. Not as bad off, but still bad for Remco Evenepoel, who in addition to a broken collarbone, broke his shoulder blade in the crash. The Belgian champion who we saw bunny hop a ditch, but still hit the ground and crashed. Primoz Rolich, now with Bora Hensgroe, who was in the race lead there in the Tour of the Basque Country, he crashed, was in the ditch, and was able to get up and didn't have any fractured bones, at least those are the early reports. He got in the team car and went away with the team, where the other riders, like Jonas Vingigo, like Remco Evenepoel, and the other riders there on the ground, Sean Quinn, of course, the American of EF Education, Easy Post. Well, those guys had to go to the hospital and it was a serious incident and that's what the organization is trying to avoid here and their decision to do that set of curves before the Arenberg, well that came out even before that crash in the tour of the basque country richard plug the gm of visma lisa bike well he applauded the decision if it's right if it's wrong at least they're doing something to try to make a difference in cycling it's a sport where these riders are racing full out in lycra no protections different than moto gp formula one and they're racing on roads that are normally open to traffic that often they don't get to see beforehand before heading into those races. So we all wonder what can be done in those races, especially when race organizers are so cash strapped for money. But let's focus on the hell of the North, the queen of the classics, the third of five cycling monuments. And we're in the 2024 season and it's been dominated by Alpecin de Kunic, Jasper Philipsen taking Milano San Remo, and in Flanders, and now looking into Perry Bay, a repeat. Well, it's Matthew Vanderpool. Oh, I'm just super excited, actually. I can't remember this time. The last time I was this excited to start a race, so it's uh, yeah, nice, nice feeling. It takes me back to being uh, young and just uh, yeah. I still say the best, the best race I've ever done is Junior Roubaix. So hopefully uh, tomorrow can uh, not not uh, change those. Yeah, feelings about this race. I remember that seeing you there inside the velodrome when you won, and here we are many years later. You've been watching the classics. Did you have a look at Flanders? Did you get any ideas on how you can upset this Matthew Vanderpool bullet train that's heading towards Co uh, Roubaix? Yeah, I think uh, everything's been going pretty smoothly for 
for him this year so far, but you know, tomorrow is uh, a day where anything can happen. And, you know, I think it's a bit like a World Championships in that, yeah, you don't necessarily need to be in your best shape to, to win. It's, um, yeah, it, it, it can be just, sometimes just falls falls into your lap. But, you know, tomorrow I want to uh, go out and enjoy it, and I think that's when I get the best out of myself anyway. You loved your all-in tactics in Flanders. Uh, will you employ a similar tactic in Roubaix, or what's the thinking on how to topple Vanderpool? Uh, definitely I won't do the same as in, in Flanders, you know, this was not the best best and smartest moves I have uh, I have done in my career, but uh, tomorrow is a different race and, uh, you know, I, I showed once this season that he it was possible to beat him, but Mathieu is, is just on a different level and it's going to be tough tomorrow and it's, yeah, we of course we try to attack him, but uh, he's not the only he's not the only rider in the race, so we have to to watch out on everyone. We saw Visma Lisa bike really put the hammer down early in Flanders. We could see the the goal there was to catch Vanderpool on the back foot. Obviously, you guys are down numbers now. Uh, Jorgensen's out. How are the tactics going to be, and how do you beat a Vanderpool in a race like this? Yeah, I mean. Van der Poel showed uh, his class again uh, last week. Um, he's super hard to beat. But yeah, I think uh, in a race like this, it uh, comes more down on numbers. So that's uh, the goal to have, have numbers for us again to play uh, to play against him. Um, and then we will see uh, how the race will end up. But. Um, yeah, and the form he is in now, he's, he's quite hard to beat. Oh gosh, it's hard because, uh, I mean, he is a force to be reckoned with. And, uh, yeah, I think aggressive racing is, is the best way to do it. I mean, he's one guy and he's on one team. You know, if, if every team, uh, you know, can, can throw everything at him, I think that's, uh, you know, uh, two, two strong guys are stronger than one guy. So uh, maybe not Vanderpool, but uh, I think, yeah, just, uh, you know, a numbers game is, is how you do it. We have to do our race. No, it's not just focusing on one rider. We have our chances, so yeah, that's it. We don't, we don't have fear to, to, to one rider. Is it another race, though? Is it that race for first with Vanderpool and the race for second? Or, or is the chances of a win realistic? There's always a chance to win, no? If there weren't a chance to win, I would be at home. Speaking with all the riders there, we're trying to get an idea on how they can upset the Vanderpool ride towards the Roubaix Velodrome. Well, Pitcock's now in the mix, and he knows how to give it to Vanderpool. Cyclocross foe, and also on the road. They're battling often. Mads Pedersen, too. We saw that he did beat Matthew Vanderpool in Get Wevelkim. He knows how to do it. He even mentioned that there, but he also did mention Matthew Vanderpool while well, he's on another level. Dylan Van Barl and the Lisa Visma bike team, well, they're going to have to try to do something. Matteo Jorgensen's not starting this race. He was sick during the week, and they decided not to race him there. They did bring in Christophe Laporte. How he's going, we don't know. They have Laporte, they have former winner Dylan Van Barl in the squad to try to do something. And as we saw in the Tour of Flanders, they're willing to take the risk, go out early and put Vanderpool on the back foot. But as we saw in Flanders, Alpes and de Kunic has a strong team. But if those teams, like your Visma Lisa bike, Mads Pedersen, Lidl Trek, if they come together, they do something, they isolate Vanderpool, they launch several attacks against Vanderpool, anything can happen. And in Paris-Roubaix, everything happens because they're racing on the cobbles, difficult conditions, although tomorrow we're going to have sunshine in this Paris-Roubaix. But high winds are expected, and John Dagenkamp, himself a former winner in Paris-Roubaix, talked about the high winds playing a factor. Roubaix is a super difficult race to win. Um, not only the legs, you need some luck, as I said, and um, yeah, we'll try, of course, to win again with the team tomorrow, but it's, uh, it's going to be difficult. But I think yeah, we already had a, an amazing season so far, so we are quite relaxed and we'll just try to do our thing again tomorrow. I, I never really make a plan, uh, also not for tomorrow, especially tomorrow. I think you can make uh, 100 plans, but uh, they will all uh, be away before you get to them. It's, uh, it's a race where you just have to try and stay out of trouble and then uh, everything is to play. It's always possible uh, to beat someone. I think for sure uh, Roubaix is a really particular race um, where you need some luck as well. It's also not that, that, um, that easy to make a difference. There's not uh, climbs like in Flanders, for example. So 
uh, it's more of a tactic race in the end. Anything is possible in this race. We're 12 hours out. Everyone's mind is on Paris-Roubaix and of course also the safety of cyclists and whether or not the Tour de France stars can be ready for the Tour de France in three months time. But for now, we pause, we take a deep breath, we get a good night's sleep, and we sit back and enjoy Sunday, the 2024 Paris-Roubaix.